Okay, so uh, it's a pleasure to be here in Korea. I'm really happy to be here at the World Conference. And uh, I'm gonna talk about the surface adaptive total focusing method for a complex geometry. And afterwards, show some application examples. Also talk a little bit about uh, plane wave imaging as another complex method. So uh, first of all, I'd like to just quickly summarize the difference between phase ray UT and FMC TFM. So phase ray UT, most people in this room are probably familiar with, but if not, is a typical multi-element pulsing uh, method can be used typically in the linear array of firing along linear sequence or in the sectorial array uh, firing at angles and can be very useful and provide a lot of angular information and or wide area coverage information. These are some uh, pictures we have. Phase rate uh, technique is important that we are predefining our aperture and our focal points before we do the firing and pulsing. And then in the hardware, doing a summation of the A scans from the different elements. And after that, we get one A scan out of whatever that aperture was that was used, which has a focal point that was predefined in the algorithm before we fired it, before we received it. So moving beyond phase ray UT, another method of synthetic focusing, a uh, common acronym, many people have heard by now, but just to review it, there's two acronyms, FMC and TFM. FMC is for full matrix capture. So full matrix capture is a, important to distinguish, it's a data acquisition scheme. It's the acquisition process. So this is the way that we acquire raw A scans from all the elements that we're using and receive them. After that, we have to do something with those A scans and we use uh, one example is TFM, the total focusing method, which is a post-processing image reconstruction after all these A scans have been fired. There's a family of ways we can do this. So the acquisition scheme for FMC, for full matrix capture, is to fire one element and receive on all elements. Fire the second element and receive on all the elements. So we do this for all the cycles through how, how many elements we're using. Fire each one individually and receive all each time. So if we use it on a 64 element array, we have to do 64 squared A scans and acquire 4,096 A scans, which is a lot of information and a lot of data. And it can be a bit slow, but incredibly powerful. So looked at as a matrix to explain the full matrix capture name, there are matrix of receiving elements and transmitting elements and we have an A scan representing all the permutations there, thereof. Looking at all those individual A scans in a raw format is uh, demonstrated here where these are echoes from something inside of whatever the source is. Looking at this with our bare eyeballs is not particularly useful for most of us. So we need to do something with all these A scans and we reconstruct them using an algorithm. So we wanna draw what is underneath this probe and we're gonna define a grid to do that. And we use a defined grid density. And then we're, we're concerned about the ray path to the point in the grid from the source element and to the receiving element and the velocity of the material in which they're in. We use this information and we do what's called delay in sum. It's one way to compute TFM. We'd apply this at every point in the pixel grid. And by taking all of this raw A scan information and running it through that algorithm, we can come out with this image reconstruction of these holes. And we can see it has a great resolution. SNR is extremely strong. Uh, much superior to phase ray UT. So the next question is what if our surface is not regular or we don't know what the surface is ahead of time? We're gonna be able to figure out how to compensate for that. So we're gonna adapt to our surface. So as a precursor, as a minimum equipment to do this technique, we would need 
a hardware component to do the pulsing and receiving, such as an explorer, a probe, and we have a water wedge here which can conform itself to curved surfaces, and a computer on which we're going to do the reconstruction algorithm using a GPU. So a couple examples of why we would want to do com complex shape inspection and be able to adapt to the surface. This is looking at a weld right through a weld crown. This is a curved surface with a uh, certain radius that maybe we know and maybe we don't know before we do the inspection. And this is a block ex uh, showing a more random geometry, wavy geometry. So ahead of time, if we know it's a flat surface or a curved surface, we can uh, build that into where we're doing the delay laws during the reconstruction algorithm and changing the velocity of the material. So can we do it on the fly? Well, the answer is yes, we can do it on the fly. If we use the Fermat principle to optimize the minimum time path for the ray in material one and the ray in material two, combined with Snell's law, do some great math and run it through some fancy algorithms. I'm not going to get into those too much. We can then estimate where this surface must have been if it was not uniform. And from there, we can use the same FMC or PWI data set, and we can calculate the delay and sum at each one of these grid points, taking into account where the surface must have been relative to the probe in this acquisition. So an example, if we didn't know the surface and we just tried to do this assuming it was flat, going into this block with standard TFM and saying that the surface changed at this depth everywhere, we would have this terrible reconstruction that shows us very little information about what's inside this block. By using the adaptive algorithm, we simply discover where this surface is during the acquisition and during the reconstruction, compute it, and display it with incredible SNR. An example of this block, we have these side drilled holes, notches, incredible resolution under the flat section, incredible resolution under the curved section, and again under another curved section. So this removes or limits the need for extensive and expensive motion control. So we don't need to know the geometry that well, and we don't need to control our uh, motion equipment that well. We can simply do it in the math with the A scans. So this improves data quality, and this is going to greatly ease data interpretation for the end user or the inspector. Uh, this is an animation of this in real time with an adaptive wedge, water-filled wedge, under a phase array probe. So, uh, example of using this, these are side-drilled holes under a weld crown uh, with a three millimeter side-drilled hole. This was inspected with a five megahertz 64 element probe. And this is high resolution of that image through that curved surface. Again, a real, real weld inclusion application. This is an actual flaw under a weld crown. So TFM gives us incredible resolution, incredible power, and we can adapt to the surface with it. And that's great and eases an in, uh, inspector's workload. However, TFM is known as being rather slow, very data heavy, very slow. So can we try to get that resolution out in a faster way? Well, the answer is yes. We can do something called plane wave imaging, which changes our acquisition scheme. We're going to fire all elements at once and receive all elements individually. So we can do this at uh, angles as well as straight beam incidents. So this is going to give us a lot more penetration power, actually, because we have a lot more energy at once going into the part. So again, we have this matrix scheme, except that we're only doing transmits once per angle defined. So the number of cycles is determined by the number of angles with which we want to acquire data. And then we receive on each.
so with this scheme, again, we can go back to adaptive algorithm and still interpret where the surface is if we want. So in this case, it's this exact similar formula. We've just added in the angle number to the algorithm. And we're concerned with the ray path through the coupling medium and into the inspection medium and computing the delay in sum yet again. So PWI gives us an advantage of speed because we have to fire many less cycles than we do with TFM. And that also means less data overhead. So application examples of using this are great. This is, these are application examples of TFM or PWI, but each of them using adaptive algorithm. So this is actually a valve and unfortunately I don't have the video here, but you can actually watch the uh, valve going up and down inside this in real time during this inspection. These are actually threads on the side of the body. This is an interesting slide. So this was uh, using the resolution of adaptive TFM in a plate application. In this plate, there was this interesting low noise uh, pattern observed. And this is a B scan, a side view B scan of that through thickness to the top and bottom of the surface. And we see that that pattern was actually highly localized near one face. So with destructive testing, we were actually able to confirm that this was a grain growth issue where there was a significant grain size difference in certain regions of this plate. And it was easily resolved by TFM and traced backwards and uh, the process of manufacturing the plate was able to be improved. This is a good application picture. This is uh, number three flat bottom holes in stainless steel. These are uh, 100, 125, and 150 millimeters deep with extreme signal noise resolution. Uh, all done in APWI with one acquisition. We don't have to do zone focusing, which might be the approach to solve this kind of depth with a phase ray approach. And this is an interesting animation here. This is PWI and TFM compared. We are actually amplitude sizing a number two flat bottom hole up to 150 millimeters deep in one acquisition with adaptive PWI or adaptive TFM. So on the right, we have the, uh, these were calibrated to be 80% plus or minus 5%. So this is essentially the uh, amplitude at each one of these number two flat bottom hole reflectors. This is all one setup, one acquisition. This could be done in one shot of the part. So uh, we also use this in immersion raster applications. The speed makes raster a good application for adaptive PWI. And I've just demonstrated that you can see amplitude calibration with the technique. You can also scan large things quickly. So the largest thing I've scanned is 150 millimeter, oops, oops, sorry, that's the wrong slide. Uh, this is a demo that I'm actually running in the booth that if you wanted to, you could come see us over at TPAC at the booth C14. Um, we can detect number one, number two, and number three flat bottom holes with adaptive PWI at quite the speed. Usually when I ask people to do the demo themselves, move the transducer, they go far too slow expecting it to be slow. You can go fast. So this is the application I meant to mention. This is a very large plate. This is 3.2 meter long plate by about one meter width, over an inch thick. This acquisition was done in about 15 minutes in a single acquisition using adaptive PWI. Uh, and Furthermore, the adaptive algorithm, we retain information from where we determine the surface to be. And we can go into post acquisition analysis and we can actually manipulate that data. In this case, we've actually flattened the surface for analysis to be easier of this plate. So you might ask the question, why adaptive if we're doing immersion testing on a plate? The plate should be flat, right? The customer tells you you're inspecting flat plate. Well, if it's three meters long, to an ultrasound wave, it might not be so flat. So we can accommodate for that and then flatten it out in, in analysis afterwards. 
So the name of the game here is speed and resolution. So the conclusions here are that we have many acquisition schemes we can use, depending on the speed and precision desired by the inspection. And uh, even more beamformers are available. I think some of my colleagues will be speaking about different ways to use this information. All this is featured in our TPAC ultrasonic instruments and softwares. Please come see us at the booth at C14. Talk to us about what your needs are and how we can help you solve them. And please follow us. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>